Hello, good evening, everybody. Okay, I've made this. I I told a friend, uh, a, a, uh, a, what do you call it, a Facebook friend, a contact. I was going to make a quick video for him about something. And um, I'm going to try to do it. It's difficult. Uh, it's it's probably one of the most difficult areas that I that I think about or contemplate. Um, and I'm not sure where to uh, where to. Um, my dog is trying to beat up my cat. So cute. She's teaching. She's 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 teaching. <laughs> I gotta leave it. I'm gonna leave it there because it's too funny. She's teaching her how to behave. Uh, which is kind of appropriate, actually. Okay. Um, judgment. Um, how we treat each other. Moral. Moral. Um, criteria of. For society, the law. What is criminality? What is transgression? When do we. Um, um, what is considered good behavior, what is considered uh, violating someone else's uh, rights, um, you know, it's the law, the necessity for police institution. This is a whole area which is actually, the way I, um, I understand it, is very contained actually as a, as a subject matter, but it's in how it relates to humanity and um, how humans treat one another and then how that connects to the how we try to um, uh, administrate and run the world is hard to f put it in one one title one one category one subject matter um, it seems to be spread out in a, in a, a few areas of of nationhood and civilization. So I'm going to pause. That's the introduction. I'm going to pause it right there because I'm I'm making some pasta actually. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it to um, like I tried it, which is my like typically my style is is to take these dissertations to where we can relate to um, individuals, small group, friend interaction, group interactions, things that are, you know, uh, contained in, in, a, in, in small scale examples. And um, often I think I talk about how the baby, baby toddler development and the first steps and what happens and how um, we become people and how our mind develops and how we learn to think what we do and um, so for this I'm going to also take us to where we uh, are raising a baby our child um, how toddlers are raised in societies and how we pretty much concur that they all start on a blank blank slate and the world is their possibility the world will be their lives and their personality will be anything will be will that you know that we teach them that the world teaches them and so we seem to be very clear very um, aware that the baby starts in a blank slate a white canvas and how it develops how, how kind of how we affect it psychologically what it will learn from its family from its friends and elementary school and what the world will teach it will make the individual the adult that we will later have um, it seems that we start off thinking of it uh, properly correct because that's what happens basically the world makes us um, including starting with our parents, with our experience, how it all starts shaping it, uh, our mind, our psychology, our behavior. In in reality, what it is, it's we come with a unique, a unique um, uh, wiring. Uh, how can I say this? A unique uh, 
way of, of uh, that our brain was uh, has uh, put together natural ten, and then how that will interact um, with the world is what will become the adult. So it's sort of like saying we start off with ingredients with pro different proportion in individualized uh, differently proportioned ingredients and tendencies uh, that later depending on how we interact with the world and how the world makes us will give the adult uh, that we become and so you take the same person and raise them in a city in India you will have a, a adult uh, a different adult than if you raise them in a high pressured um, rich enclave of Manhattan let's say um, so and, and and you know it's it will not be the same adult that came about by growing up in the savannas of some African country as opposed to growing up in Rio uh, so this is basically how it happens right this um, however somehow along the way society starts um, hanging on the person the um, the accountability for everything that they do in other words there's at somewhere along you know I guess it's what we call coming of age or be, becoming an adult but during that phase it seems that society becomes a society that no longer looks at the person as the result of the world but of something that they intentionally meant to be meant to become they are that because they wanted to they that person that was subject to all these uh, to the relationship between society and what and the package they were born with actually becomes somebody who meant to be the uh, the person they become in all the things that they do and what I want to talk about is why do we change why do we become different about how we regard other individuals, other people in this respect. Why are we so fair in the beginning when we're children and then all of a sudden we uh, we put the entire burden of how the person behaves and what they do in their life on the individual later on in life. Okay, this uh, adult, this individual that we become and uh, the, rather, uh, I, I wanted to say, the society that this individual, uh, this person will uh, be formed by influence and then affected and then judged later on, the world, in other words, the, the world of societies that we are, are um, is a momentum of, edu of collective education, in other words, we build on what we have been teaching us as we're going forward in time. We learned uh, everything gets built up uh, in all the subject matters that have to do with civilization, sciences, humanities, politics, everything gets learned and built upon what from what we believed before. And then things get changed, but they always get changed in reference, why are we changing them? In reference to what we believed before. So everything is a continuum. And therefore, um, we uh, behave in this, uh, riding on this continuum of society. In other words, we uh, build our reasoning on, on what the world has given us as a, a basis upon which to think the ideas that we do. We take from this momentum, we take from this advancing civilization, and uh, on that we continue to grow, change, create new perspectives, uh, create new worth, new values that compare to things we're changing or we don't change, and we continue to uphold the things that we believed yesterday. Okay, so there, there's that. Let's call it the, the world classroom environment. Like we lived at school and our entire world reality is this classroom. 
uh, and the classroom starts early in the morning and whatever we're talking about in the afternoon will have a direct relation to what we've been building through the hours through the morning until the late afternoon and whatever we are in the late afternoon will have to do with uh, the uh, the building up the constructing upon um, what we knew before even if we change everything it will be I, I'm repeating myself but okay so we, there's that right then there is the creature the human being the that we are and what describes our being and for the purposes of understanding uh, our existential predicament what happens to us in this world let's just say that the human being is um, a unique uh, li uh, uh, conscious living intelligent social being uniquely and vastly different to any other uh, social living intelligent socially intelligent uh, living creature on the planet even though we 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 seem to come from simians and they're related to our physical body there is something about us that uh, is immensely more intelligent and and it has to do with a self-perception in the biological cosmic sense we can understand our place in the universe we can understand our place on the earth in re in relevance and in reference to um, aspects of the world life and the universe that no other animal can they may contemplate a star but they don't really understand that there's possibly other beings uh, walking around planets that are around that star and and uh, much less you know so and and that means that we're capable of understanding life itself we're capable of understanding how we came to be the way we are psychologically how we evolved sociologically um, and, and, and the road that we've been taking taking for the last million years uh, and, and, and all these aspects right and so we have this intelligence that that is uh, as such defined and without trying to describe it any further there's something that we do know about this intelligence that is clearly obvious in the pursuit that um, life and evolution would want for the species it creates on a world for example that it stays integrally evolving and knows how to defend its collectivity and uh, thrives and survives and proliferates among the, the other species of the world what we notice is very different about the human species is that we seem to on a dime turn and our inventions harm its creator ourselves we make war and kill our own offsprings in that war and and we create an amazingly intelligent medicine and science and engineering that ends up failing and hurting us or or creating catastrophes and and so it's almost like we're trying to wield a capacity of intelligence that doesn't seem to have come naturally with evolution because if you look at animals in their simplicity and their spontaneity it seems that they would never be so dumb as to eat when they're not hungry for example i mean you see some of these like human kind of characteristics and they get bored and stuff but with us it's always like a thousand times more that's that's our distance um you know a monkey will pick up a branch or a squirrel or a, a beaver will use tools to do something but we don't just pick up a tool we design a spaceship and go to another world and and try to terraform mars <laughs> foolishly of course uh so there's this this huge difference um it really makes um seems to have been souped up somehow because it, it doesn't fall in harmony with maintaining the success 
of the the collective staying together it seems like somebody put a bigger engine in a, in a small car than what it's capable of of uh, of performing as a as a chassis of a, uh, as a body it seems that we have an engine that is much more capable and ends up running us up against walls and, and and bringing down empires and starting from scratch again <laughs> so we're tumbling like this and this characteristic seems to be more uh, descriptive of the species of humanity uh, and its uniqueness compared to uh, the rest of the creatures on the planet. Okay, I think the pasta is ready. I'll be right back. Okay, so so human consciousness must certainly be able must certainly contain somehow somewhere in its intuitive, uh, let's say, um, vastness, um, an awareness of the the greater um, sensibleness of the species needing to succeed and know how to take care of its own offspring and expand, stay together and not separate and so forth like everything else, every other species of plant and animal on the world demonstrates and at the same time it notices the, the betrayal of itself. It notices that uh, you first trusted your kind, you know, the one you met in the in the other valley, uh, the 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 year before, and all of a sudden they're coming, they're preparing an army to take over your land, and you thought you were friends with your own species, uh, one valley over, and so it sees the it sees that it was completely sure that it had discovered uh, a plant that could cure those those. Um, what do you call them? Welts or warts, uh, and then uh, you know, uh, then it saw that the the patient w developed a rash that uh, that spread all over his body, and so we we see that we have a capacity to be intelligent militarily, diplomatically, scientifically, medically, and it goes against us. It ends up hurting us. It ends up uh, betraying its own creator, the one that also knows that we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to stay healthy and thrive and, and we prefer trust and we prefer to uh, the integrity of the species. So there's this um, paradigm. Uh, humanity's caught in a, a sort of paradigm and it's trying to balance this overly zealous and arrogant and da 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 and super capable intelligence that ends up betraying or failing or foolishly uh, veering off uh, the, in the wrong direction. And at the same time, we know that we, what our intention is for it to, to not do that. We know that we want to uh, not harm ourselves. We know that we meant for our intelligence to do something good and, it's, and then we just have, we end up having to deal with this contradiction that, that the world becomes. So it seems that uh, this, this predicament, this paradigm, created uh, a necessity to look with sober, sublime calmness the paradigm, the predicament that humanity, that itself, is in. Because that occurring in itself is not acceptable but we don't seem to know what to do about it. It's like we're in a perpetual state of unbalance and uh, having more than we're capable of handling, but we can't let go of it. That's just what we are. We're just so damn intelligent and we don't know how to stop hurting ourselves, right? So this created sort of a, uh, another mind, another s literary science of, in of intellect, of uh, possibly what gave uh, room for theology and for religion, for morality, for psychology, for all the conceptual human sciences that don't act but simply think of the value and the morality and, and why we're acting, where what we need to do and how we need to behave and act in order for that paradigm to not continue 
uh, self-destructively betraying us. And, uh, okay, so we got to that point. I'm going to go <laughs> take my pasta out of the colander now. <laughs> okay, so we got to... I can't eat and do this at the same time. Um, we got to why uh, conceptual, esoteric, uh, religious, morality, thinking, uh, its purpose and necessity, why it comes up, Except that we have a problem. There's a problem that occurs uh, in this process of humanity, of our in the in our beginnings. Let's say you start coming up with ideas. We started coming up with ideas. It's like, uh, for example, um, don't rush, uh, don't be arrogant, ask, be considerate, compassionate. All the um, all the things that we we see religions maybe or um, ethics and moral considerations of human rights and what have you um, start telling us but who is telling us the same one that doesn't care to stop hurting itself the same one that lies and ends up betraying itself the human being who would have who how can we respect any good advice from the one that ends up foolishly arrogantly betraying and, and hurting its own kind we how are we supposed to listen honor that and so thus comes the necessity to have something that is outside of mankind god somebody that created us and then pulls back and goes back to his part of the universe and says, you're on your own, you know, I made you, I made you like this, and now, you know, figure it out. And I will, I will make it so that you know I exist, <laughs> according to scripture. Um, and so we, we needed to have God. Now the problem is that perhaps we didn't know all this setup. We didn't understand this mechanism, that our predicament, our, our, our paradigm, this condition that we were in. And so we, uh, gave, we, we saw that there was a good aspect of guidance and wisdom or a necessity or wh however we felt uh, or we gave value to deities or uh, priest authority or uh, the idea or the notions or the scripture of God or gods um, we um, never knew how to separate it we never knew how to although the Torah says it the Torah says something very interesting it says I created myself out of a hollow in the universe it's almost like and, and there must be other places too and in, in around the world in different writings where the, somehow some writers uh, were inspired enough to realize that we have to de de disempower ourselves from God. We cannot uh, own God. We cannot take uh, claim its authority. Although we have a necessity for a higher wisdom, a guidance, uh, something that keeps reminding us you mean well, but you're foolish, you know, you, you are very capable, but there's something in you that will always uh, want too much, go too fast, be too selfish, worry and be too scared or be too uh, suspicious or insecure. And this all happened to you because of, of evolution. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, it's kind of in with you. And so it's very hard for you to handle this intelligence that I gave you, <laughs> says God, right? <laughs> in any case, um, so this, this is the overall paradigm that we have, the only paradigm that we have known. It's a, a three-part paradigm. The deity that we have not been very good at, at not wanting to claim as uh, uh, on our side or us with it, <laughs> But nonetheless, we made the world, we, it, it joined the, the, the paradigm. And then the uh, overall, the greater, uh, more, the stronger uh, 
purposefulness of life, of proliferating and sharing and staying together and want to make sure that others don't fall off the planet, that we, that, you know, because that means the collective, the collective succeeds. And then the, uh, the resultant of our capacity, our, our intelligent capacity. Uh, that it is also part of the single whole uh, world that is this paradigm. We uh, put ourselves inside the house, the houses that we build, and then they collapse on us during an earthquake. Um, but we want to make sure that everybody has houses. You know, go figure. Uh, so, and uh, this uh, third, uh, first element that we needed to also have the deity, the, the, the greater authority of, uh, of something that we can't own because, like I said, we put him outside. So it's always what it says, what God says is nobody can touch, except that we seem to have said, uh, but, uh, you know, he lets, me, <laughs> he lets me borrow some of his authority, right? <laughs> anyway, in any case, so this paradigm has... Um, has created the, a base of thinking. Um, for example, look at the judicial system. Um, when we see somebody who was a good kid, you know, went until he was five, and then you found out that he went out and murdered somebody, he first killed some, somebody when he was 14 to join a gang, it's known that nobody, he never got caught, and his friends knew that he had done this, and then he came to find out that when he was 30, he ended up murdering uh, his wife's lover, and, and then he got thrown in jail, right? And so he got, um, he's in our, in, in being uh, administrated by our judicial police institution. And how is this unfolding? It is unfolding according to the paradigm that we know. The unquestionable authority bad and good and there's we don't understand why it's just something outside of us that came before us uh, is uh, written in all these places and we has we have all these instructions and and we can own this authority of good and bad and uh, evil and and so forth uh, and then there is the uh, we talk a little bit about how he was a good kid and you know, doesn't it seem strange and unfair? And who who can figure out why other people did murder somebody and they only got ten years and they want to give this guy the death sentence? You know, <laughs> or they gave him th that guy murdered out of a crime of passion and he only got thirty years and they want to give this guy life. And so we talk about the greater uh, the wish to survive and stay together and not separate. Uh, and then we talk about. The, um, the need, the, Eric, the, the convinced that our institution, our intelligence, uh, must uh, not, uh, certainly does not fail. Cars will not crash into other cars. <laughs> where did, where did the, when did that ever happen? <laughs> Seems to carry on mm -hmm. mankind. And we see that it is incapable of understanding the real... Um, entire whole picture of this man's development they they don't we we can't reach with our institutions the ultimate goal which is the higher goal which is to not separate the species to heal one of the elements that's missing in our in our you know in, a, in one of the institutions that is not placed because we we have education we have family protection we have defense, we have uh, transportation and building, and they all seem to be so close to uh, what any animal would want in order to survive, right, uh, in this world. But when it comes to healing, we only have this uh, precociousness in, in, in inventing chemistry and, and operations, and we can put back together the, the body like it's a piece of clay, and then we can also make some medicine but healing is not taken by nations all the way to where we can see it also as a part of life as what any animal 
and creation would also uh, would also define their existence. Um, and of course, uh, the reason we don't is because we didn't create our species. We didn't create life on the planet. Otherwise, we'd be very good. Although intuitively, we understand redemption. It, we're very poor at it. We understand that, that for example, in tribal times, in small, in, 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 in small villages, understanding what happened to the the guy that stole the sheep from the old lady in, in the in the in the in the tribe uh, was a good kid and so in the love containment of the, the 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 circle of elders that are judging his thievery uh, the thief feels contained and understood and he's able to reach natural redemption in other words there is healing in the mind as there is healing in everything healing is part of life there, you see it in trees you see it in our skin you see it in everything uh, um, healing is just it's like growing nurturing thriving moving and dying you know it's all part of the swath of creation healing goes with maturing and growth and reproduction and, and living on and healing is part of that. Uh, as far as all the other institutions, we seem to come pretty close to life's desire. You know, we, we don't have a snail um, uh, shell, but we have these amazing houses. Uh, we um, have uh, amazing communication with food. We, we have more than, more than nature itself cares to <laughs> cares to feed its own creations we have excess of food but when it comes to healing that part of life and living organisms we're very bad especially when it comes to the human mind we 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 started off well uh you know when saying the, the kid is just the baby the toddler is one human being coming with his own stuff and who knows what wonderful, well-integrated form of an adult he will have, you know, when he's born. But because of how this predicament, I mean, how this paradigm of existence, of a failing being that needs the outside judgment and condemnation, because we could not handle it on our own, uh, we default or we fall rather to putting the blame on us because we have not been able to own uh, the the health of our own species the the integrity the 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 uh, the success of the collective we we don't own we can't seem to grasp and to grab the success of the whole human collective and the reason part of the reason that rather to believe that um, what we have come to believe only furthers it only continues to make it um, continues to allow it to fall into that in other words we didn't um, create an outside authority condemning knowledgeable the things that we will never be able to understand because it was done to us or because we were lazy we really couldn't see what was happening to us we couldn't understand why we were so capable and yet we would destroy ourselves with our own understanding so we had a necessity in order to have harmony in order to make it all uh, to have an answer which is what we always pursue is to have an answer to be able to explain why things happen we needed to have an identifiable, describable, outside source authority uh, explanation to it. And as basically it said, and as it says in scripture, you know, you, you're just born in sin, you're, you're messed up, you know, you're, some, you're born evil or, or you were good and then you failed, you fell out of paradise, you had it, but then you, you can't seem to handle it. And that's kind of 
and now we're okay. <laughs> okay, that makes sense, we said. <laughs> that makes sense, you know, because I was wondering why we kept betraying ourselves as a species, but now that, that there's something outside that is telling us that's how you are, uh, I'm okay. In reality, we created that because we needed to have it explained, not because it made it any better, but because mankind always just needs to understand uh, the explanation of something, what something is, and then we're satisfied. As long as somebody can explain and answer the question of what it is, then uh, we're okay. And um, unfortunately, that has created for a, a, a mechanism that has um, fixed us in, in, um, in, in reasoning that we never change, that we, we continue to change the world, but always built on that, on, on, on us not being able to, you know, uh, know why things happen to us. We just have to punish ourselves, and we have to stop ourselves, and limit ourselves, and invade ourselves, and, and take it away from the other, and and we because we know it better than somebody else, and they can't handle it, and you know they deserve to be invaded or they deserve to be hung or they're to blame and so the world doesn't change this way because we had never risen to being able to own our own uh, collective and our own um, reality and therefore diffuse and disarm the uh, paradigm of failure this doesn't mean that uh, creators or our creators or God has to disappear it means that we would have we would start to open up to a different idea of what creators or God is um, instead of it being the, the the fall guy the one that, that he's, he's uh, you know and all the things that we have always said that that also speak of God a creator or wonderful but also as as some kind of duality that is um, you know, unfair or unjust somehow will uh, is is the is evil and good or is 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 the uh, is uh, hardship. I can't remember right now where there is some some literature that speaks of deity this way. But in case um, our creators or God, I'm sure uh, would not oppose <laughs> because. They must be definitely. If you look at how many billions of planets and much larger stars and and systems, I'm sure that their capacity will always the the capacity. Uh, in other words, that a a thousand times larger capacity of uh, of doing of accomplishment of um, exercising their intelligence in the universe must be. 10,000 times greater. In other words, we're, I'm sure that we have been discovered, in other words, if not created. I'm sure that we're at least being watched. <laughs> so that this doesn't, this doesn't mean that there is no God or there are no creators. And would they not want us to all of a sudden own our own property? <laughs> I'm sure that I wouldn't be saying this, for example, or or many other people wouldn't have said similar things like what I'm talking about, um, and different ideas in different ways, or so much would not seem to be going there actually in this this time and age. Um, of course, that would mean we would have to uh, be make a, a leap in in in, uh, in transforming the world, and all of a sudden start caring about not blaming the individual. Uh, he was only trying to be one of the collective. They, we were all just trying to be equal nations. We, were, you know, we all had our equal right, our equal destiny to be one of the whole. And therefore, nobody is to blame. Nobody is better. <laughs> no nation is better. No judgment is better. Everybody, because the first um, directive... Uh, of, of the species is to always find its wholeness with all the other individuals and since we're all wanting to always be accepted try to grow try to reach try to fulfill adulthood try to finish maturing try to 
uh, expand our health and, and reach our full form and uh, be like everybody else, you know, and this, this is the ruling government. It must mean that if we are to judge and understand the individual, we must start with what happened to that person's life that got in the way of them achieving what we would all prefer to be, including that person that did such horrible things, which is to not harm others, to be one of the collective, to have a full life. These things are actually known. There, there are, there's a lot of little sayings and stuff floating around, disassociated, that fit into this long dissertation that I've, that I've been going on for 40 minutes now. Uh, we just need to see how it all fits into a single explanation uh, of, our, of humanity, of what uh, was a paradigm and what needs to become uh, a, a sensible, understandable explanation of, of, uh, of the human situation, the human predicament, the human uh, condition in the world. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Oh, I was going to mention your name, but now I would have to go back and open um, YouTube and, and just to say your name. But you know who you are, and I'm sorry it was uh, so long, <laughs> this long. <laughs> and I'll see you. <laughs> I'll see you there. I hope you enjoyed it. And as you can see, it has to do with, um, with everything that we were talking about. Okay, bye.